students in our earlier discussions you have seen that uh, how we can find out resistivity of semiconductors using various techniques like power probe method van der poe method spreading resistance method we also discussed some con contactless methods for finding out resistivity of semiconductors now we are moving forward and today we are going to discuss how to find out carrier concentration and for that today we are going to discuss a specific method capacitance voltage method so first let's see uh, the concept of carriers and dopants so you know that uh, in the semiconductors uh, we have a situation something like this if you take the example of silicon semiconductor we have silicon atoms they are bonded with each other something like this and if we have a dopant here this suppose this aluminum is a dopant here this aluminum have replaced one silicon atom from this side and uh, because this uh, aluminum is present here and, and this is uh, a, uh, a p type impurity in the semiconductor so it introduces a hole here right so this dopant have introduced one hole here uh, or you can say vacancy is created here and this hole act as a carrier so it means uh, this present example is the example of a p type silicon semiconductor now in many situations it is very important to find out how many carriers are present into the semiconductor because the number of carriers decides the electronic properties of material and uh, uh, basically uh, we are not interested in finding out the uh, total carrier concentration in a material our purpose is to find out carrier density because that carrier density is sufficient enough uh, because if once we know carrier density we can find out the uh, total number of carriers present into the in any material so uh, the the topic of interest is to find out carrier density and sometime it is also important to find out dopants also but suppose if we talk about carrier density specifically then uh, there are two electrical methods which are widely used to find out the carrier concentration into semiconductors one is the capacitance voltage technique and second one is the current voltage so if we talk about capacitance voltage technique it means we measure the capacitance of some semiconductor structure as a function of voltage so we have data here so here in this data for a various values of voltage is we have different value of capacitances so we, we keep on changing the voltage and we keep on recording the capacitance and this variation of capacitance as a function of voltage gives us some information about the presence of carriers or, or the uh, about the uh, density of carriers into the semiconductor material second method is current voltage based method so here we record current as a function of voltage so in that case uh, we have voltage as one parameter and then we may me measure current in a given structure so the dependence of current on voltage is a measure of the the density of carriers into the material and suppose we uh, we we want to find out dopants number of dopants into the semiconductor so you may ask that why we are measuring dopant because we are mostly interested in carriers only and if you know carrier we can find out uh, dopants also because most of the time number of carriers is present to the dopants see if we uh, see a, if we if we think about a, a simple situation then this statement is true but in many cases in many structures in many case of dopant profiles you will see that uh, at different locations within the same semiconductor structure you will find that the number of dopants is different from the number of carriers present at that location so those kind of structures uh, we will discuss uh, when we will move forward uh, but at uh, at at uh, present uh, we just want to mention that uh, if some, someone is interested to find out the dopant density into the semiconductor what technique can be used for that purpose so there are two uh, most popular techniques for finding out dopants into the semiconductor material one is the secondary ion mass spectroscopy it is very famous with the, its abbreviation sims s i m s so if you go to the semiconductor research so you will find that this is very common technique for finding out the doping density in the semiconductor secondary ion mass spectroscopy so there is one more technique ion beam technique 
so uh, but anyway so about these techniques or about the doping density measurement we will discuss in some other lecture today our main concern is to find out carrier density and that also specifically with one particular technique and that is capacitance voltage technique in the next lecture we are going to cover this technique but today's lecture is more focused on the capacitance voltage technique for finding out the carrier density carrier you know is the free carriers which are moving into the semiconductor they may be hole or may be electron depending on the situation whether the semiconductor is p type semiconductor or, or n type semiconductor so let's move forward for more detailed discussion about this particular technique now the name of the technique where we use this capacitance voltage data to find out carrier concentration the name of the technique is differential capacitance technique so you will see in the coming discussion that uh, why we call it differential capacitance now for this kind of measurement to be done we need a special kind of structure and that structure should have a space charge region within it because we know that uh, space charge region if present there in any structure and you know this kind of uh, space charge region is mainly there in case of semiconductor junctions for example if you talk about pn junction in a pn junction have a space charge region or you can say depletion region at its interface and if it is reverse biased you know then the width of this that uh, space charge region depends on the applied voltage so if you change the applied voltage width of that depletion region or that space charge region you can say its width changes and that gives us some information about the capacitance and you will see in the coming slides that uh, that variation in capacitance or that capacitance itself also give you some information about the uh, carrier concentration into the semiconductor now uh, for this kind of measurement we use a structure or connection something like this so here we have taken a p type semiconductor this whole part is a p type semiconductor and this basically is a metal semiconductor contact because all this is semiconductor all it is p type and uh, it is jo joined with a metal here and this metal is connected to this bias so this bias voltage is applied to this metal so you see here a p type uh, potential is applied to this metal side and because of that there is a electric field here into the semiconductor and the direction of this electric field is in such a way that it it uh, pushes the holes away from this region so all this uh, this contains holes because it is a p type semiconductor but the biasing is in such a way that the holes are pushed towards the interior part of semiconductor and here near the top part uh, of the semiconductor or you can say near this metal semiconductor interface we have a depletion region and the width of this depletion region uh, that depends on the parameters here so this is one example of a structure which can be used for this kind of study to find out the carrier concentration into the semiconductor uh, there are other kind of uh, structures also which we can use so the present structure is this short key diode so the arrangement which are used here they are also called sh short key diode or you can say metal semiconductor contact even pn junction can also be used so if we have a pn junction we can apply that reverse bias voltage to that pn junction so at the interface you know there is a depletion region and that depletion region width depends on the applied bias so that kind of arrangement can also be used for uh, studying its uh, differential capacitance and that differential capacitance gives you information about the carrier concentration and not only pn junction even a mosfet can also be used there you know in case of mosfet also there is a depletion region just below the gate contact and it between the uh, source and drain region so the width of that depletion region controls the conductivity into the semiconductor so that kind of structure also have a capacitance and the variation of capacitance is uh, also uh, a function of uh, carrier concentration so from all these structures where there is a space charge region we can use and uh, we will vary the width of the space charge region as a function of voltage so how the the width varies with the applied bias that is an indication of carrier concentration into the semiconductor structure so whenever we want to find out carrier uh, carrier carrier concentration 
we have to fabricate these kind of structure any one out of these uh, many structures which we discussed and we get the information so how we do it that will be clear in the coming slides uh, so already i told you that applied bias dc bias that determines the width of this depletion region right so if you increase this bias here the width of this depletion region will increase and it means you can say width of uh, this uh, space charge region is increasing now here along with this dc bias we are applying a ac signal also right this ac bias is also applied here and this ac bias is like a type of uh, small variation here in the voltage here that small variation which is superimposed on this dc bias it fluctuates the width of the piston region and because of this fluctuation uh, uh, the charge here in the depletion region keep on changing like this so for example here if it goes to positive depletion region width will reach here when this uh, ac bias is zero at that time depletion region width is here so width of depletion region will keep on fluctuating like this it means the 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 charge which is present here in the depletion region that doesn't remain constant this charge will keep on changing sometime it increases when the width goes up to here and when width come back to this position it again goes to the original value so the charge here will keep on changing with the voltage and you know if the charge is fluctuating it's changing with the voltage uh, we define this kind of uh, behavior as a capacitive behavior so the capacitance is a, a change in the charge for a given change in the voltage now here you see the charge which is present here into the semiconductor that is mentioned as qs and the charge which is present here on the metal side that is qm so this metal side is connected to the positive terminal so that's why there is a positive charge here and the opposite side means semiconductor side it will have a negative charge you know why negative charge it's a p type semiconductor so holes they are pushed towards this side and you know if it's a p type semiconductor in a p type semiconductor if you remove holes from this portion uh, what left behind is a negative ion so that's why all this portion is negatively charged so this qm is equal to qs means the total charge which is present here on this side is equal to the total negative charge which is present here only thing is the polarity of charges is different but the magnitude is same so this capacitance can be defined in two ways like change in this charge on the metal side or change in the charge on the semiconductor side for a given change in the voltage applied voltage but this sign is negative here because the charge which is present here in the semiconductor is negative right now uh, the the signal ac signal which is superimposed here during this measurement this signal frequency may be anything between 10 kilohertz to 1 megahertz so it can have some other value also but most of the time uh, during the measurements the frequency is chosen somewhere between these values and the magnitude of this uh, potential is also very small it is uh, so small it's about 10 to 20 millivolt so in comparison to dc voltage it's very small the dc voltage here may be several volt but this is only few millivolt so what is the effect of this its effect is only to fluctuate this boundary the position of this boundary is not stable it keep on changing in response to this ac signal so in this structure you can see the profile is given something like this here on the x axis if you talk uh, it is the depth from uh, starting from here so if we are here it's zero depth as we move here the depth is increasing so if we are here at zero it means we are at this interface as we are moving towards this side this depth is increasing so here you see w w is the width of the depletion region so if we are here it means within this portion there is a depletion region and beyond this portion so uh, there is no depletion region it's a neutral semiconductor somewhere here on y axis there are two uh, two variables p hole hole density or na acceptor type impurity because it's p type semiconductor so acceptor impurities are added here so this scale indicates both these things now here if you talk in depletion region you can see uh the holes are not present because uh, mobile carriers have been repelled towards this side what we are having here is only immobile charge negative ions and uh, you see here 
two kind of uh, indication two kind of uh, uh, data are plotted dotted line means they they accepted impurities ionic impurities and this dark line means holes so see here only this uh, dotted line is present here it means the ionic impurities or the ions which are present here or ionic charge which is present here that is still present in this portion because it is immobile it cannot move it will stay here so it is indicated here but within this portion if you talk about the free carrier concentration free carrier concentration is zero you see px px means free holes as a function of x so it is zero here because this is a depletion region all holes have been pushed towards this side but if you talk about the ionic concentration or immobile ion concentration that remains fixed when we go towards this side means when we come here here free carriers means holes are present and acceptor type impurities are also present and they are at the same level because each acceptor type impurity is introducing a hole so the number of holes and uh, the number of uh, ionic impurities or dopants is same here so dotted line and dashed line both lines are at same in this portion but within this depletion region uh, dotted line is uh, at the normal position because uh, there is no change in the concentration of immobile ions but free carrier ion, free carrier concentration here is zero so that's why it is zero here and now see the boundary of this depletion region is at two point at here or here so when uh, they the the applied bias is just v right so then at that time boundary of this depletion region is here so this is p1x at what time when the v applied bias is equal to v but when this applied bias have this additional component so the net voltage will increase here so the width will be pushed towards this side also this boundary will pushed will be pushed towards this side also so there is a change in the width by dw so the next boundary is here at w plus dw so at this boundary uh, the v applied bias is dc bias plus this small ac bias is also there so this is second boundary so the the conclusion is that the boundary of the carrier or the boundary of this depletion region keep on changing depending on the applied bias and within this portion within this portion there is a charge here charge is present here also but this charge is variable charge this charge keep on changing depending on the uh, magnitude of the supplied signal so this dqs that is small charge within this changing width right so that is the the variable charge which introduces this capacity effect here and how much variation is there in this width or how much variation is there in this uh, uh, charge in response to the applied bias so that depends on the the carrier concentration here if the carrier concentration is very high then the variation in this width is very small or you can say the change in this charge is very small so how much change is there in the charge that indicates how many carriers or how much is the density of uh, free carriers in the semiconductor material so let's move to the next slide for more discussion now this diagram is shown here again so if we talk about uh, the charge which is present here so first we will write this kind of journal equation for the charge q you know is q a is area of cross section of this uh, structure and here we are considering all the possible components present into the semiconductor semiconductor may have intrinsic holes intrinsic electrons semiconductor may have p type uh, dopant or you can say acceptor type impurity or donor type impurity so all are shown here so intrinsic hole intrinsic electron so electron introduces negative charge so that's why negative sign is there hole introduces positive charge so positive sign is there and d dopant ions so if donor type impurities are added into the semiconductor so the ions which are created there they are positive ions so they introduce positive charge there and if uh, there are uh, the p type impurities are added there then they are acceptor type impurities so the ions which are there they are negative ions so they introduce negative charge here so whole arrangement is like this but here we are talking about a specific case uh, where there is a p type semiconductor and since it is a p type semiconductor only acceptor type impurities are there 
intrinsic impurities we are ignoring so we can write this expression something like this and this is our depletion region approximation for p type substrate so depletion region approximation says that we are ignoring the these these are not present into our material and since it is p type semiconductor so only this component is present this is also not there right so the the equation becomes like this minus sign will come out here so this expression gives us the charge which is present here in this portion but our purpose you know in this method is to find out the capacitive effect capacitance because this uh, the charge changes as a function of applied bias so for this purpose so qs you know and if you want to find out capacitance then you have to differentiate this uh, charge equation as a function of applied voltage and for that you have to uh, uh, write uh, to, to do, do like this so you just differentiate this uh, q with respect to v so you will get something like this so the q and a they are constant so this part will be differentiated as a function of applied voltage now there are two variables here n a acceptor doping concentration and dx x so which is uh, dependent on v so n a is the dopant concentration so that will not change if we change the applied bias the doping concentration remains fixed once we have prepared a material so n a will come out of this expression but n a uh, may change with w because if it is non uniformly doped at different location you will find w uh, you will find different value of n a but definitely once you have doped it it is not going to change with v so that's why we have kept it outside so dx so the, the the integration is from 0 to w right so the maximum w now uh, so if uh, this dx will be replaced by w but this w is function of v you know so the v if we change this v w will change so here we will keep this as it is means uh, this uh, dx will become w and this w is function of v so we will keep it like this so you can see the capacitance definitely is function of n a this is something which we want and uh, because uh, we want to use this kind of uh, relationship between uh, capacitance and doping concentration uh, because our purpose is to find out this doping concentration uh, with the help of capacitance so that kind of relationship we were expecting uh, but if we want to uh, use this uh, expression to find out n a we need to uh, put the value of d w by d v also so these are constant parameters so see we can measure with the help of any capacitance meter so n a we can find out but for that purpose we have to put some something for this expression also so for that purpose uh, first we need to solve this part so we have to see uh, some mathematical expression where w means width is related to applied potential and uh, you know that uh, the capacitance is given by this kind of formula capacitance so uh, this is area and this is w w is the the width of depletion region a is cross sectional area and from here you can find out w so w you see here it is a uh, function of c so w gone here and c came here right that kind of thing so now uh, if we uh, differentiate this w with respect to v still v is not present here but uh, uh, if we see v so which component of this w is uh, dependent on v this is constant and this a is also constant c definitely depends on v so if you differentiate w with respect to v so we have to differentiate 1 by c with respect to v and if you differentiate 1 by c with respect to v you will uh, write something like this so differentiation will be 1 by c square and this c again the differentiation dc over dv that that component will come here in short you find out w from here and in order to find out dw by dv you differentiate it with respect to v these are constant components the c is dependent on v so the derivative of c derivative of 1 by c uh, with respect to v is inserted here and this component this part is derivation of uh, 1 by c with respect to v right so all this part dw by dv 
you put here and then you can find out n a so here you see in the denominator there is c square so if you find out n a all this will go here it will become c cube something like this this will come here in the denominator and the expression will be something like this so now if you know capacitance you can find out doping concentration except ion concentration like this right and it is also possible to write this expression uh, in this way right so i am not going to uh, show you how you got it if you want to verify whether it is true or not that you can do so you can start from this side so here you see it is a derivative of 1 by c square with respect to v so if you differentiate 1 by c square with respect to v and whatever you get you put the value here you solve it you will reach back to this portion right so all this part and this part both are constant right <coughs> sorry bo both are equal right so you use this component to find out n a or use this component of fi uh, to find out n a you will get same results the interesting thing here is that this a a comes as a square term right so it is very important that the device area is precisely known for accurate doping profile because if you make any small mistake in measuring the a that mistake will appear in the value of n a significantly because here it is square of a right so very accurately you have to find out a if you are interested to find out n a using this expression now one more thing you will say that uh, the title of lecture is to find out carrier concentration but here we are talking about n a this is doping concentration not the carrier concentration so why i am saying that this method is giving us carrier concentration so we have to apply some logic to reach to the conclusion here you see how we are doing this measurement we are changing the applied bias and in response to applied bias some changes are occurring into the semiconductor and that's why we are getting some information about the carrier concentration but here we are talking that it's doping density but is it the doping density which depends on applied voltage no doping density is going to remain constant so what component is responding into the material to the change in the voltage when we are changing voltage it's the free carriers which are responding it's the free carriers which are moving from this side to this side the free carriers holes are going from this portion to this portion so we can say that all this measurement is giving us not the n a but this measurement is giving us the value of p so this assumption we are uh, like with this theory we are applying and based on this theory we are saying that instead of uh, saying that it is dopant uh, profile as a function of w it's a, it's basically or it's actually the free carrier and in this case free carriers are holes the holes as a function of w which we are getting from this expression now practically if you see the data then how you will see the profile or how you see you will see the data now uh, when we talk about the carrier concentration how the carrier concentration changes as a function of position so here on the x axis normally we have x so means when we are going we are starting from here and we are moving towards this side how the dopant concentration means n a right we can say this is n a or p whatever we want to say so uh, we we can get carrier concentration from this equation or dopant concentration from this equation and both can be plotted here so for this purpose uh, what we need to do we have to solve these equations as a function of x but where is x here in this expression also there is no x right so this expression have only these components and uh, c is there definitely so the x comes from this w so this is our x because this w gives you your location of this edge and whatever measurement we are doing using this equation that measurement is at this edge in within this portion where there is change in the charge so if w is here so it means this is our x 
and if we change the w if more w here we are doing measurement here if w reach here we are doing measurement here so whatever value we are getting from these equations the, the these these values the, the dopant concentration or caloric concentration these values are at a given w right so w is our x and w we find out from here so the x is here and this is our y so you can call this as y if you are interested in the caloric concentration or you if you say that dopant concentration then this is your y right so depending on what kind of uh, uh, data you need you can decide whether this is your y or this is your y so y you get from this equation and x you get from this equation right and then you get a profile here so the profile can be anything something like this or this like depends on the structure and depends on the doping profile within the given semiconductor now in the next slide we will have a little more detail that uh, how we can handle this data and how we can use it to get the information which we have to plot here in this graph okay so this is your important result from this so this equation you have to remember if you want to uh, use this method to find out the carrier concentration as a function of w right now this expression you have seen so this equation is repeated here again uh, for your comfort now uh, this equation have two components we can use either this part or we can use this part right both are plotted here <coughs> sorry so here you see if we use this this component this this component to find out n a now what you need you need capistance so all these are constant these are constant so you need capistance and you need derivative derivative of capistance as a function of or derivative of capistance with respect to voltage right or you can say the slope of the curve dc over dv is slope of the curve so it means if you want to find out na as a function of w so first you find out the capistance for this function for the for this structure and then at that particular capistance you have to find out the slope of the graph also the data sometime is uh, represented like this right so if you use this method or if you use this method you have to go here now first we talk about this method so you see here the voltage is on the x axis and capistance is here on the y axis right so here for a given voltage you can find out slope like this so this slope is dc over dv because on the y axis you have c here so this slope you will put here in this e equation and c also you can read from here c you will put here in the same equation that way you can find out na carrier concentration at this particular location right so w you have to find out and for finding w you have to use that equation which you have shown which you have seen in the earlier slide so anyway uh, and if you uh, so normally uh, when you perform this experiment you apply v here and you measure c so the data which is available to you is v and c right voltage and then you have capistance so that data you can plot here you are plotting here voltage as a function of capistance now when you find out x axis for that you need to find out w right for a given capistance you can find out w right so that will be your x right so this is your c1 for a given v1 so that will be your x1 that way you will then change the voltage here so you will get a different capistance right for this capistance you can find out different value of sorry uh, x2 that is actually your w right so that way you will uh, keep on repeating this measurement and if you are using this method then you have to find out the slope also slope at every point means this dc over dv dc dc over dv so at every location you find out the slope and you put here right so this slope and from this slope you will find out na right so you will get this slope here so you will get one entry at this c1 then at different v you will get different c 
you will get different entry and from each dc over dv from uh, uh, from these slope values you will find out n a so for ev that way for every v you have n a and you have w that way you will have data and you can plot this graph like this okay so here you have w and here you have n a so in the earlier slide also i told you how to do it right this is n a and if you use this say this this format this format of this equation so here you what you have to do uh, so uh, you have to find out slope of 1 by c square curve right so c data you are getting from here so if you want to go for this method so uh, from the c first you have to find out 1 by c square so the 1 by c square also you have to list from here so for every c you calculate 1 by c square here and you plot the curve curve like this so y axis 1 by c square here you have v so at every location again you have to find out slope and the slope is of 1 by c square curve so here slope was just c versus v curve right so this is the difference here and here also that x axis will be given by the same formula right so this method this formula will give you w so for every v you have to see what is the value of c and for that v you have c from that c you will find out w means your x value and from the slope of the curve if you are using this method from this slope you will find out n a at this particular value or you can say at this particular w right and if you are using this method so for each again for each v you have c from c you have value of x right and then you find out slope here and from this slope you find n a at this value of w right so you have different values of n a for a different value for uh, for for many values of w right and then you can plot the data here right so this is the way that uh, you get uh, uh, dopant concentration or uh, i told you in the earlier slide that uh, this dopant concentration can be considered as the carrier concentration because when we are doing when we are performing this measurement actually the free carrier concentrations are responding so the the dopant concentration is fixed it's not changing by changing the applied voltage so whatever data we are getting here that is not actually n a that is actually our p right and this p as a function of w right and out of these two if we compare which approach is more better so you can see here in this curve this these two curves are for the same structure and for the same data right but you see here in this graph slope is not constant and it's very difficult to measure slope at different location because it's continuously changing if you are here then it's different slope if you move a little bit here slope is different so it becomes very uh, there means there are a lot of chances that uh, you make mistake when you performing measurements with the help of this kind of curve rather if you are working with 1 by c square versus voltage graph you see the slope here is almost constant so there is less curvature in the graph here <coughs> sorry so if you are moving from one point to other so there are very small change in the slope so there are less chances that you will make mistake so you get more accurate results if you are working with 1 by c square curve as a function of v as compared to capistance as a just capistance as a function of v if you have this plot uh, then the chances that uh, or you can say the measurement of slope at different locations at different values of v is uh, going to uh, create problems in the further calculations right now uh, in the next slide we will see one example so okay so uh, first we will see uh, that same kind of measurement i told you in the first slide that uh, uh, it's not that only short key diode can be used for uh, performing capistance voltage measurement for finding out the carrier concentration we can also use mosfet structures to find out carrier concentration into the semiconductor now suppose if we are using this kind of mosfet uh, mosfet structure you have semiconductor here then here at the interface uh, uh, you have depletion region and then there is the oxide layer and on the top there will be metal metal is not shown here uh, because uh, that is not going to uh, affect our discussion 
So, the main thing is that uh, in the most structure, the one capistance which is present here in the structure is because of oxide and there is one more capistance which is present here within the semiconductor and it is because of depletion region which is created inside the semiconductor. Now, uh, these two capistances are in series. So, this uh, is oxide capistance and it is given by this uh, simple formula of capistance. A is cross sectional area and it is the um, permittivity of or you can say the dielectric constant of uh, this material, oxide material and this is thickness of oxide. And the capistance of within the depletion region inside the semiconductor side near the interface that capistance is given by this formula. Now, the question is if we use this kind of structure then uh, net width of the depletion region. So, that will be given by this kind of formula. You see in this formula you have the total capistance and you have the oxide capistance also. The W will be given by this formula. right? And uh, the same expression we can have to use to find out the dopant concentration as a function of W, the same equation will be used in case of most structure also. So, the only difference uh, will be uh, in the measurement or in the calculation of W. And w will be given by this particular formula. So, in earlier case W when a, a short key diode or sh short key structure was used, W was given by this part only, right. But now it will be given by this whole formula. The same thing uh, we can use this expression to uh, to uh, represent or to find out the dopant concentration as a function of w or, or you can say acceptor type impurities as a function of w or we can also say that whatever measurement we are performing that measurement is giving us free whole concentration as a function of w right. Now, let us see one example here. So, suppose we are having this kind of structure semiconductor structure. So, this is this portion is p type and this portion is p plus type means both portions are uh, p type semiconductors, but this portion is more heavily doped as compared to this portion and your interface is here right. This is top and this is the interior part right. So, maybe it is a heavily doped p type substrate and on that heavily doped p type substrate a p type layer is deposited here on the top. Now, if, if we perform this kind of measurement on this means we form a metal contact here, we applied the bias here as we uh, uh, discussed in the other slides and then we see how the depletion region width changes as a function of voltage here. You will see that when we enter here width of depletion region will change definitely, but that change will be very small because this portion is more heavily doped. Now, if we see the data, you see uh, the voltage is here on the x axis and the capistance is here on the y axis right. So, this graph red graph is variation of capistance as a function of voltage, but if we see the variation of 1 by c square as a function of voltage the graph is something like this right. So, uh, we can use uh, 1 by c square method or we can use uh, capistance method to find out same information carrier concentration or dopant concentration. But you see here if we use this 1 by c square method. So, that gives us some more important information because at this particular V if you see uh, there is a sharp change in the slope here and you have seen that if we use 1 by C square method then the slope of this 1 by C square curve uh, decides what is the carrier concentration. So, it means at this point carrier concentration is changing right, but if <coughs> we see C curve then at this point there is no much change here. Right. So, that is why I was saying in the earlier slide that uh, 1 by c square curve gives you more accurate and more useful information uh, in term of uh, the profile or in term of variation of carrier concentration as a function of W. Now, here in this graph the data if you see x axis have a voltage, but when we talk about profile I told you on x axis we need W. So, if we want to convert this uh, data the C V data or 1 by C square V data into the depth profile data something like this means here on y axis we have doping density on x axis we have depth. So, this V have to be converted into uh, W and uh, that uh, for that for this given V we have to see what is C from C we have to find out W and that data will be plotted here. So, the profile is something like this right. So, up to this point the carrier concentration is almost same, but once we reach here 
then the carrier concentration changes. So, this variation is somewhere here. So, 1.6 nearly 1.6 micrometer and this change is reflected here also in this curve. You see the actual variation in the carrier concentration is well reflected in case of 1 by c square curve and it's, it, it, it was not uh, reflected in the one in c versus v curve right. So, it is always useful to go for this kind of thing. So, you see c v curves are always non-linear you see you can see here. But 1 by c square v curves clearly shows that carrier or doping density non-uniformity. So, just if you look at the data, uh, you can easily identify when the non-uniformities or variation in the carrier concentration occurs within the semiconductor. And exactly at what location inside the material this change occurs, for that this V have to be converted into W with the help of C at this point, right. And then data will be plotted like this. I know the, the topic is little bit tricky and you have to understand many things. You have to understand capacitance voltage behavior of uh, any uh, space charge region in order to understand this method. Uh, but it is a very useful method and very important method. So, any kind of questions or any kind of discussions you want to have uh, related to this, uh, you can discuss with me anytime. I will be happy to answer your questions. So, I hope that uh, the topic is uh, clear to you. So, any doubt or any questions you can ask anytime uh, by contacting me or by sending me messages. Thank you very much. In the next class, we will continue with this capacitance voltage method. There is one more variation of this technique and that also can give you us give you a very useful information about the carrier concentration. Thank you. Thank you very much.